Okay, one more time. Okay, can you do it straight ahead this way? Okay, and then uh, how about this way? All right, thank you. Okay, as you remember, uh, most of these techniques have uh, some kind of psychological or a philosophical element to them. There's a physical movement, and in this case with the water, the feeling is one of responsiveness or uh, like a wave perhaps. Slow motion. John comes in, and I'm moving back to accept it, like, like a wave moving back. And then it crashes in, like the wave crashing against the source. So a little bit more up to speed. You can see that uh, it has that nice water wave movement there. Very important. Okay, the third one is uh, fire or hinokata, sometimes called kanokata. And this is a very committed, uh, sometimes explosive type of uh, feeling. And it's translated through the movement. Uh, Raquel, let's, let's show the, uh, the kanokata, the ka movement, or the fire movement. And it's a downward strike, and she throws that uh, that uh, shuto we call or sword hand into the uh, into the throat. This direction, please. Okay, one more, and out this way. Okay. All right, thanks, Raquel. So again, this block is a very powerful strike into what well, we're saying there's a kick or there's a, a lower body type of punch coming here. The shoulders are open, whether you're striking up or striking down. Don't be hitting with the arm, hit with the whole body. And you can see the spine hitting too, and down. You can see that this comes hitting straight like that. So if John will come up here. Let's say John is uh, trying to th throw a punch to my stomach this time, blocking it down and striking right through. Let's do it slower. Face this way. Strike down here. And you can see my spine coming. And then put in just like that. A little bit more up to speed. You can see very committed, explosive strike, both on the downward hit and the shuto or knife hand, sword hand to the side of the neck. Okay, number four is the wind feeling or funokata. The feeling of this is much more evasive, benevolent, uh, laissez-faire, don't hassle me type of attitude. And as you can see, as we go through this, it's not really a linear progression. It's more like uh, exploring the emotions through movement. The wind feeling, again, is a very, very soft movement compared to the last one, fire. Uh, Raquel, if you would come out here, please. Uh, and demonstrate the, the kata for wind or funo kata. It's a very low initial strike, and she kind of floats that uh, strike forward, that right hand strike forward. Now, just uh, can we close up here? This is called boshi kang, or thumb strike, and you can see that she uh, has her hand in a fist, and this thumb here. I uh, would be striking into the soft part of the uh, solar plexus, perhaps, or maybe the lower floating ribs, OK? Face straight ahead. Let's, let's see it again. Low block. And one more from the front. And one more this way. Maybe two. OK, one more. OK. Thanks, Raquel. Okay, this block here is 
take the opportunity, since this is a training exercise, to open up your hips, build the strength in your knees and uh, your thighs and, uh, and your ankles by going down. Again, the shoulders open. It's a floating motion, like you were floating on the wind, and then floating forward with that bow she can. And light on your feet for this one. Light on your feet for this one. John? And let's do a heel throw a, a kick. And I'll float out of the way of this kick. And that time I went to the soft part of the, the throat. Okay, so as this comes in, floating out of the way and into the small of the ribs that time. But you can see the first thing I do is kind of float out of the way and, and the strike just floats in there. Very windy feeling. Before I said benevolent, uh, I'm only as benevolent as he allows me to be in this. But um, a little bit more up to speed. Float out of the way. Pop. And it's, remember, wind is also hurricane. Wind is also typhoon. The last one of this series of the Sanshin no Kata is the uh, Kuno Kata, or the void. Void is another one of these uh, words that is a little bit misleading. It's not void as in emptiness so much as void as in devoid, perhaps, of any uh, predetermined manifestation. In other words, it's the closest we can get in training to spontaneous action. Uh, I would say, and this is my opinion, that these training exercises, earth, uh, water, fire, and wind, are great exercises for the dojo, for the training hall. Here's why. We're looking for an amalgam, a combination of body, mind, and spirit together as one hard, full, balanced weapon to defend our lives and the lives of our loved ones. As we train through the earth, wind, and the fire, and the water, uh, it allows us, if we let it, to combine physical movement with a technical, a technique, if you will, and also this feeling, this elemental, psychological, or philosophical feeling. When you get to the void, however, now we're talking about how we would feel, perhaps, if we were really confronted on the street and we had to let our skills come into play spontaneously. Now, it's almost an oxymoron to say spontaneous training, isn't it? So, um, you know, there's a couple of things that we can use to approach this feeling of spontaneity and also um, take things out of the purely technical and the purely in your face, upfront, understandable. And this is a very important aspect of ninja training. Sometimes it's called Kyojutsu Tenkanho, or the juxtaposition of truth and falsehood in, uh, in the midst of a fight. Raquel, why don't you come out here and, and uh, demonstrate the uh, Kuno, uh, I'm sorry, the Kuno Kata, right? And uh, we'll talk about, a little bit about Kyojutsu Tenkanho when she's uh, finished. Okay, one more, yeah. Okay, forward. And the other way. Okay, thanks. All right, did you see the hand go up? This is uh, what we call a kyojutsu. It's, uh, it's a metsubishi or a eye blinder or a distraction. And we use that in the fight to kind of uh, be a symbol of um, a feint or uh, things that aren't quite what they seem to be in a fight. And you want to introduce this kind of, uh, in, in, this kind of thing into your training. Uh, in case you're outnumbered or you're overpowered or you're facing a stronger opponent and uh, pure physical ability is not going to give you a chance to uh, 
to go home safe and happy, you're going to need something extra. And that's what this Kyojutsu is all about. OK, so the technique, again, we're using a lower block. But as I, as I move in, I put this hand up. And I make it nice and big and round so that the person can see it. Hopefully, his eye is being drawn to the hand. And then, as he's looking at the hand, the kick comes up from underneath and strikes the person uh, in the body. John? All right, slow motions. Hitting through. This hand comes up. Hopefully, he's going to glance at it. And as he does, I can kick, throw that kick uh, right in underneath there. Okay, one more time. Okay, and you can see this hand is, is designed to uh, be a feint or a distraction to this person as I throw that kick up in, underneath there. Okay, thank you, John. So there you have the first five exercises of the ninja training, the Sanshin no Kata, sometimes called the Gokui, uh, five secrets. Really doesn't matter what you call them, but uh, I hope you take an opportunity to see the way uh, Raquel moves and John moves, as well as myself, because there's no set way to do these techniques. There's a basic uh, form, a basic indication, and from there you have to develop your own style.